One of the girls working in the gift shop came around the corner and snapped a picture and they came up. You can see the speakers in there. All right, this is where the world's longest poker game was played. It lasted eight years, five months, and three days. You have players like Matt Masterson, Diamond Jim Brady, Adopolis Bush, founder of Budweiser, and Randolph Hearst of the Hearst Fortune. The game was ran by a guy named Dick Clark. He had tuberculosis. He came here to the better doctors, drier climate, to make a buck or two. He was definitely the guy to beat. There was a thousand dollar buy into this game, which is about 30,000 in today's money. The house, of course, got 10%. And in that eight years, over $10 million crossed that table. Damn. They didn't even finish the floor because that game started. I thought it was because everybody chewed tobacco. The figures. But remember, I said it looks like everybody literally said, guys, let's go home, and that's what they did. This is how they found that table in 1934 when they came back. The chair represents somebody folding or leaving the game. That game is actually in the Guinness Book of World Records. I can talk this way. It's in the Guinness Book of World Records. It would suck to play a game that long and nobody wins. And anybody down on your luck tonight, now's your chance. They throw the money on the table for good luck. Or the owner says, so that they can say they were a part of that game. I go for good luck. Because I, bought, I threw a couple bucks up there one night, one bought a lottery ticket on 50 bucks. <laughs> and I keep forgetting my dollars because you know they don't make pockets in these things. It ain't won nothing since, so. <laughs> That's what I go with. But either way, either idea is cool. Was Doc, was Doc Holiday ever here? Yes, he was in this game. And that was his favorite too. Oh my God, I forgot to tell you how much time his favorite The puppy dog flashing in the screen was the exact right. But yes, that is Doc Holiday's favorite table up here in the corner where the rim pops in. And I'll show you the famous handkerchief duel between Doc Holiday and Johnny Gringo when we go back to But all these bottles were found down here. Some of them still have liquor in them. Underneath the stage, you have untapped whiskey barrels. I keep telling them they need to let me find out if it's for a good cause. <laughs> it's either really good stuff or just by now. Mm -hmm. And if you look right, it would be. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sometimes you can catch a man with a long white beard in this one. Can you find the bed in there? It's one of your first monthly beds. It's that wardrobe. Oh, wow. And this one was occupied by Josephine Marcus or Sadie Joe. Her license to practice prostitution is hanging in the frame by the door. Tombstone in the 1880s, there were over 3,400. Licenses to practice prostitution is your beer. I just want to know what the final test was. Is that from Boyle? I think that's the screw. Oh, the screw. Because oh, the okay. they're screwed shut. And hold on to your camera if you oh. put it through there because they will knock it out of your hand. Mm -hmm. And that is again above my paper. 
the Jameson was only 18 blocks long, and they had 106 saloons here. So definitely no shortage of women or whiskey. And your nude photo of Sadie Jo, that was meant for Sheriff Behan, because that's who she moved here to be with, but it didn't surface until after White Earth died. She was so distraught over his death, she didn't even attend the funeral. My husband would help me for sure. <laughs> and here's the document room. There's a lot of faces of the ladies that used to work here. A lot of faces to the names you've heard around town. A lot of cool stuff. Tombstone had a huge Chinese population. It was ran by China Mary. She also controlled the underground opium bins. And your bullet hole in the bar was made for that lady in the burgundy frame. That is Miss Minnie, or Big Minnie as they called her. She was almost six foot tall, which is unheard of back then. And she was 230 pounds of pure lusciousness and a pink tutu. She was also the bouncer. <laughs> but I guess she threw a guy out, and I guess ashamed to be thrown out by a woman, he turned and fired. It was also a bad shot he missed. You have Madame Mustache in the corner. I heard she really did have a mustache. But she controlled the French ladies. And here in the double frame, you've got Billy, Girl, Billy Milgrain in Gold Dollar. Gold Dollar murdered Margarita here. Margarita had the hots for her man. She told her that if she did not leave him alone, she was going to cut out her heart. Well, she went over to the crystal, came down here, and sure enough, Margarita was sitting in his lap. So she grabbed a dagger from her garter and stabbed her to death. Somebody yelled that Marshall was coming. Her and Billy fleet out the back door. They never seen them again. Probably Mexico, more than likely. But it took them a hundred years to find the murder weapon. They were doing excavating by where the outhouses were, because you know, that's where you find a good shit. <laughs> and that's where they found the murder weapon used to kill her. Today it's locked in a safe. Do you know why they caught Big Nose Kate, Big Nose Kate? She had big nose. She had the sucker stuck in everybody's business. Ah, oh, Sean, you were she right. She was nosy. <laughs> Now, does she not look like Mila Kunis? Oh, oh, my God. oh yeah. Yes, she does. Then you have Patrick Swayze and drag down there on the end, Miss Birdie Wood. <laughs> does think. it not look like Patrick Swayze? Oh, God. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Every time I go through, I see him. I'm not arguing, in fact. But yeah, she's yeah, stunning. She has dead arm. Yeah. Charlotte Lopez. Yeah, they have to be related. Well, Mila Kunis is Russian. Yeah. And she's Lopez, so you would think. Well, right? Yeah. Lopez is not. Russian. Not Russian. No. She's probably native to the region. She's very pretty, though. Yeah, very, very similar. Very pretty. Yeah. And then, of course, yeah, she was from Budapest. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's funny how they get here. I mean, I didn't know that was an option. I, to just go travel, just yeah. to go overseas. You have Irish Mag. And I'll see what else. She can kill the French ladies, and then you have China Mary. She yeah, what's the China Mary story? I forget. There was a huge Chinese population That's here. Right. It was around 3rd Street, mm -hmm. where I live. <laughs> and... Isn't there the China Bend and Breakfast? Yes, okay. Yes. And you can have anything to do with the China Bend or woman without her consent. She also controls the underground. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's also a big, a big hill cemetery. But see, the whole thing, and I don't know That's what they gave them here, yeah. or $5, because the men would cash 